This isn't about geriatric travel problems. This is a loud statement from the Gulf states. You don't have to be an expert. You have to be about 11 or older to understand what this statement is. And it's not about Yemen. This is about Iran. This is a rejection of the agreement the United States is about to embark in with Iran. And they are saying they will not be bought off with an agreement from the United States, even if it were a written agreement. It wouldn't be worth the, the paper it's written on, given the history of this administration carrying out the promises and the threats it made. Uh, Charles Krauthammer talking, of course, about the uh, Gulf uh, State Summit, where a bunch of Gulf states didn't show up, and the king of Saudi Arabia, uh, of course, didn't show up. We've talked about that at length. Jed Babin, contributing editor for the American Spectator, former Undersecretary of Defense for President George H.W. Bush, and co-author of the Sunni Vanguard. And Jed, um, you know, I, I think Charles has it exactly right. They could spin this uh, Saudi king snub all they want, but it's still a Saudi king snub. Well, it's true, and it's really just more than a snub. It's a de declaration of independence from our foreign policy. It's a divorce from our foreign policy because they know they can't trust Obama, and they look at what's going on in the, in the Iran deal, and they're saying, we can't live with that. And that's a very literal saying that we can't live with that. Their nations may be destroyed just as well as Israel could be. Absolutely. And you wrote a great piece at The Washington Times uh, talking about how, you know, Obama will reject any uh, pact uh, at this summit that uh, he feels will threaten his, uh, <laughs> his deal with uh, Iran. Yeah, I mean, the real point here is the Saudis were going to be here. They're not going to. The Bahrainis are not going to be here. They're going to send lower-level officials. What they wanted was an agreement that we would literally contain Iran. That would require a military force aimed at Iran, which is the opposite of what the president wants to do. So what they're having now is a realization that they can't trust this guy. They frankly never could, although they're now just really coming out with it openly. And they're saying, we're going to deal with it independently and they are. It's going to be a huge arms race in the Middle East. It's going to be a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. And it will very well, I think, predict uh, the demise of several of these countries or Iran. It's going to be an either or. Don't forget, Steve, this is a religious war. It's Sunni versus Shia. And they've chosen up sides a thousand years ago. So they've got to go forward with this. They are going forward with this. And so are the Iranians. And, and you know, I had General McChrystal on earlier. And he said that, you know, uh, ISIS is just a... Uh, a uh, symptom of a larger threat and how the United States has to step up and lead. Like, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm no military expert by any means, but you don't have to be. I think Charles Krauthammer said uh, you could tell if you're 11 years old that the Saudi king was snubbing us. Uh, I think if you're 13 years old, you can understand that we could do such tremendous damage to ISIS if we wanted to, but the president is the we and he doesn't want to. Well, that's true also. But again, ISIS is a side issue. I frankly don't know why everybody's making such a big stinking deal about them, because they're really, really, really small potatoes. And the point really comes down to the Saudis and the Egyptians and the Jordanians. They ought to be dealing with them themselves, if they're really not either. So what they're going to be doing right now, and I think this is a big wake-up call for them, they realize they're going to have to do things themselves militarily, not just diplomatically, and they can't just rely on old Uncle Sam to come pull their bacon out of their fire, as we have been doing for, oh, I don't know, 70 years. Let me, let me throw you a curve here, if I might, um, and, and this is from a crystal also. Uh, you know, we're talking about rules of engagement, and of course in your role, your former role as Undersecretary of Defense, I think it's fair to ask you. I, I said, when did we change? When did we change how we fight wars that Israel can't, you know, bomb Gaza if they kill a civilian? We can't, you know, uh, drop a bomb that might harm a civilian when we're trying to kill an enemy. Oh, the people of Iran are good. We can't harm them. Only the leadership. So we're supposed to target the leadership. I said, when did we start fighting wars like this? And he said, the media. Because of the media coverage and the way that they're there and they cover it, that's what changed how we fight wars. Well, I'm a curveball hitter, so stand back. <laughs> the real point here is it's not that we are blaming the media. And I'm sick and tired of conservatives blaming the media for everything. Yeah, they're at fault in most cases. We learned to lose wars under Harry S. Truman when we didn't win in Korea. And we've lost a lot of wars since, Vietnam and so forth. The real point here is we have an ideological war. We have learned to lose wars. The second point we lost really is when George Bush declared Islam a religion of peace. You know, that made their ideology 
And let's face it, Islam is an ideology as much as it is a religion. The real point comes down to you can't win this war like any other war unless you defeat the enemy, not just kinetically, but ideologically. And God bless Stan McChrystal, but he was never allowed to do that. I don't think he even thinks in those terms. Right. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Barack Obama would not allow him uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, the political correctness rears its ugly head. Jed, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, pal. Hope we'll do it again soon. We will. Jed Babin, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's very interesting. I know he hit the curveball out of the park. He really did, uh, as I expected him to do. Uh, but it's very interesting. Um, it, it, it is, and I think McChrystal, if I remember back to earlier in the uh, show into the interview, uh, talked about how you know if we if we had CNN in the Civil War, we wouldn't even have uh, fought some of those battles even back then. All right, give me five is next. Don't go away, folks.